Okay, gang, so here's our video on synaptic transmission, and um, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a quick review before we get going here. So, uh, at the bottom of the screen, I've drawn two neurons. We call the first one in purple. We call that the presynaptic neuron, um, and then the one in green is going to be our postsynaptic neuron. So, the way it all starts, guys, is remember that, let's say this purple neuron was at resting potential, so, uh, so that was at negative 70. All right. Well, it had to have some sort of a stimulus, and the stimulus could be touch, pressure, vibration. It could be a, a chemical that we taste or a chemical that we smell. Um, whatever it is, you get some sort of a stimulus. If this part right here, this very tip of this dendrite reaches threshold, okay, that will start an action potential right there, one action potential, right? And you'll remember that because of conduction, one action potential will cause another, and will cause another, and will cause another, and will cause another, and will cause another all the way down this axon. Now this axon doesn't have myelin wrapped around it, so we'll call that, um, so this is called continuous conduction, and it's a little bit slower, but let's say we get all the way to the end, okay? What we're gonna focus on in this whole video is what happens here between these two neurons. So how does the signal cross from the end of this neuron to the, uh, the end of the purple neuron, which is called the presynaptic neuron, because it's before the synapse, okay? This gap, is called the synapse, okay? Now, these two things are really close together. These two neurons are really, really close together. They're microscopic distance between them, but they don't touch. So we use, this is where we're gonna use the neurotransmitters. We're gonna release the chemicals across here. Those are gonna come across, bind to the receptors on this side, and if this one reaches threshold, then we get a new action potential, action potential, action potential, right on down the line, okay? So we get this wave of action potentials moving to the end. And we do the same thing here. We release new neurotransmitters, and they might cause a new action potential on the next neuron, okay? So this is what we're going to be focusing on in this video, um, is the uh, the whole process of how we cross the synapse, okay? So the first part, okay, step one for us, the very first start is the action potential. AP stands for action potential reaches the, the synaptic terminal, the very end of one of these um, axons, okay, so the very tip of the axon. So the at synaptic terminal is also called sometimes the axonic terminal, um, but the action potential comes down to the end, okay? And that depolarization, because there's a, there's a voltage-gated sodium and calcium doors open up, okay? So we get a depolarization. Um, so normally the tip right here is at negative 70, It gets depolarized and it loses its charge. It moves closer to, say, negative 55. And the sodium and, cal uh, sodium and calcium goes open. Okay? And remember that if we were to look at this membrane, if we were to zoom in on it, the inside is negative because it was at negative 70. Okay? The outside was positive. And outside is where you have almost all the sodium and almost all the calcium. Okay, so those two things are on the outside. So if you open it up, they're both going to come rushing inside, right? They're going to go from high concentration to low concentration, and they're also attracted to the negative charges inside there. So these positive charges will come rushing inside, okay? And what happens, just like we saw in the action potential, the positive charges come in, and they're going to reverse polarize. They're going to make the inside um, positive and the outside negative. So let me pause for a second. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to zoom in on this little part right down here, the very end of this axon terminal. And if we looked at the end of this axon terminal, what you would see would be, here's our cell membrane, okay? The inside just became positive, right? All that calcium and sodium rushed in, just made the inside positive, the outside is now our negative side. Well, inside of here, we have these bags, they're called synaptic vesicles, and they're filled with neurotransmitters. Okay, so NTs, I abbreviated with NTs in here, but the neurotransmitters, the neurotransmitters are the chemicals that we're going to release, okay? Now, the interesting thing is these are negative on the outside. So ordinarily, they would stay away from the edge because the edge is normally uh, negative, but now it's positive, okay? The calcium came in, the sodium came in, and we made the inside positive. So what happens is the neurotransmitters get attracted to the edge, and they just move right to the edge. This bag, the whole bag called the synaptic vesicle, right? Vesicle is just a bag, okay? And it's in the synapse. That's all we're saying. Um, it's going to move to the edge, and it's going to cause exocytosis. So these neurotransmitters are going to move to the edge, and they're going to get spit out. So let me, um, 
remember what will essentially will happen is it will come and fuse to the edge. So this is the edge. The bag will join the outside edge, and then it will ultimately do this kind of a deal. Open up, and all the neurotransmitters that were inside that bag just got spit out onto the uh, exit. Okay? And that's what you have right down here. Exocytosis, we just released the neurotransmitters. Okay? And then the last thing on the slide, those neurotransmitters then have to diffuse across and bind to specific receptors over on the green neuron. Okay? So the presynaptic neuron, the purple one, release the neurotransmitters. They got to diffuse across this little narrow gap here. And then they got to come across and they got to bind to specific receptors on that side. All right? So when those neurotransmitters bind across, okay, when they go across and bind, they're going to actually open ligand-gated or chemically-gated, remember that's just another word for chemically-gated, um, channels for a specific ion. So if this is the green one now, this is the postsynaptic neuron, right? Postsynaptic neuron, it's at rest, it's at negative 70 millivolts, okay? But let's say I have a door right here. Actually, let's make this, let's make it a green door. We got this green door here, and this green door is a door for sodium, okay? Well, if the neurotransmitter, which will make the blue, here comes the neurotransmitter, comes in, do, 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 comes in here and binds, it'll open up this door and sodium can go wherever it wants. So where would sodium love to go? Well, it wants to go from high concentration to low and the enzyme is negative, so sodium will come rushing in. And just like before, that would change the charge, guys. That would change our charge from at rest, negative 70, this will cause depolarization. Okay, it'll cause depolarization, and it might reach all the way to negative 55. Okay, if it does that, then we get a new action potential. Okay, now the other scenario could be is if we had opened a different door, and let's say we open a chloride door. Let's say the neurotransmitter comes in here, binds here, but it opens a chloride door instead. Right? Well, if chloride went inside. Well, you're adding negative to the already negative side. So the chloride would get stuck right here. It's positive, but it would get here. So that would actually have the exact opposite effect. That would hyperpolarize. It would move us away from threshold. Okay, so maybe negative 90 millivolts, or 99 I wrote up there. All right, so we have two possibilities. The ions can either excite, which is moves the neuron, neuron towards threshold. So it depolarizes, moves it towards threshold. So depolarize, moves towards threshold. Or it hyperpolarizes, which means we're moving further from threshold, and we call that an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So excitatory neurotransmitters are, are going to do this. They're going to move us towards threshold and probably get a new action potential right here, right? Versus inhibitory will actually cause this. It will actually move us further from threshold, and therefore we we'll probably won't get an action potential, right? Um, if we reach threshold, okay, so if we reach threshold, then we get a new action potential over here. And remember that this is just one little tiny part of the green neuron. So let me back up a couple slides. So here's our neurotransmitters in red. They got released. They came over and bound over here. And again, when they bind over here, they're going to open a door. It's either going to be excitatory, which means it moves this neuron. This whole neuron gets moved towards threshold, okay, the green one or its inhibitory moves it further from threshold. But if it reaches threshold, it's gonna have an action potential right there, and then another one, another one, another one, it's gonna go all the way down um, the way we did before, and we'll release new neurotransmitters at the other end. All right. all right, all right. So when it's all said and done, after these neurotransmitters are released, we have to uh, finish the process by removing the neurotransmitters, okay? Um, so we have to remove them. Some of them get sucked back up, and we use a phrase called reuptake. It sounds like I kind of made it up, but that's the normal phrase. So this would result in the neurotransmitters being pulled back into the presynaptic neuron. So some of these neurotransmitters will actually get sucked right back up in here and reuse. Perfect recycling system. All right. Um, some of them are destroyed by specific en enzymes. And NT, remember, stands for neurotransmitter. So there's specific enzymes. And I'll give you one example here. So ACH is a very common neurotransmitter, and it is eaten by an enzyme. So here we go. Okay, here's the enzyme that eats it, and this is called ACHA.
acetoase or acetylcholine esterase and ASE at the end of the word remember reminds you that it's an enzyme so this enzyme will come across and eat that neurotransmitter and destroy it okay so between those two things we should be able to get rid of all of these neurotransmitters that are in the gap here be able to erase them delete them um, and stop the signal okay so the remaining slides on here guys are just going to show you the exact same stuff they're just visuals okay might be a little bit better than my drawing so so this first one is supposed to show you uh, in here, those are the synaptic vesicles, right? They're filled, each red dot then is a neurotransmitter, okay? Each of the yellow little Pac-Man things down here, those are the enzymes waiting to destroy the neurotransmitters when they're released. They're always out there waiting, okay? And all you're supposed to see out of this is here comes the action potential coming down. That's what these red lines on the outside are. Those are the, that's the action potential coming on down, all right? So the next thing should be our calcium rushing in. So let's take a look on the next slide. Boom. Here comes the calcium rushing in, which remember that's going to make the inside becomes positive, and then the synaptic vesicles move to the edge because they're attracted to this positive charge. Remember, the synaptic vesicles are normally negative around the outside. Okay. Um, so they get pulled to the edge, spit out the neurotransmitters. Okay. So the next thing that should happen is these neurotransmitters, the red dots, are supposed to go over and bind to the channels, these pink things on the on the opposite side. So they got to go across and bind. Okay? So let's check it out. Boom. There's binding. Okay. And now remember, when it binds, it's going to open a door. In this case, it opened the sodium door, which is going to cause depolarization, and it's going to move it towards threshold. So this is showing you that, hey, here's a new action potential, which is going to cause another action potential right there and right on down the line. Okay. Um, remember, it could be inhibitory and do the exact opposite, but in this case, it's showing you an excitatory neurotransmitter, opens a sodium door, and moves it along. All right. Um, and... Here's the action potential going down, and at the same time, they're trying to show you that the enzymes eat away some of the neurotransmitters, plus some of the neurotransmitters just be sucked back up, and that's what these actually are over here. These are bags of neurotransmitters that suck back up and then packaged again into a new synaptic vesicle to be used. All right. So uh, this last one just kind of summarizes things, kind of goes through the whole process. Um, it shows you uh, the neurotransmitter coming out and the enzymes. So here's the neurotransmitter. Um, calcium coming in, oh, sorry, impulse, calcium coming in, the release of the neurotransmitter, okay, so we're going to release the neurotransmitter, it's going to come across and bind, open the sodium door so sodium can come rushing in, this is the enzyme, remember, so the enzyme breaks apart the neurotransmitter into two pieces, um, which can then be taken back in, recycled, rebuilt, and then reused, uh, so it's a very, very good um, recycling system. All right, so big overview, just to go all the way back. Let's actually do it this way. So big overview, remember synaptic transmission is how we pass the signal from the end of a neuron to another neuron. Actually, we use it for muscles and nerves as well, or for muscles and glands as well. But we get an action potential over on this side, which causes another, causes another. You get a wave that goes all the way to the end. When we get to the end, a little bit of calcium comes in, causes the synaptic vesicle to move to the edge. The neurotransmitters get released. They have to diffuse across and bind over on this side. On this side, they'll open up doors. Sometimes these doors on the membrane, so I just zoomed in right here, guys. This is taking that, zoomed in. Okay. Sometimes those doors will let in like sodium or calcium, which causes a depolarization. Na or calcium. Sorry about the awful handwriting there. Let me try and fix that. All right, that's going to cause a depolarization if it opens up instead, if it opens up either a potassium door or a chloride door, okay, um, the chloride ions would go in, potassium, uh, sorry, potassium would actually diffuse out in this direction, but both of those would cause hyperpolarization, and then this green neuron is probably not going to have a new action potential. Okay, so if you excite it using these guys, you're probably going to depolarize and probably get a new action potential. If you open up either a chloride or a potassium door, then you're going to cause hyperpolarization, and you're probably not going to get a new action potential. All right, hope that works.